All right, hi guys. Uh, welcome to part one of the Intro to Python series. Um, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be writing code in a website called repl.it.com so you don't have to install anything on your computer. So let's go ahead and log in. We can log in with our email address or Google account. Um, what we're gonna do is go down to create and create something called a REPL. So we'll click this plus button we're going to select the Python programming language, and then we're going to create a, we can name it whatever we want, maybe we can call it Intro to Python uh, Part 1. Um, we can also call it yeah, Intro to Python Part 1, part one and then your name. So we'll create the REPL. And now, once this loads, we can start coding. Let's give it a second. Um, what we've got right here is a console and a shell. This shell is a lot like your terminal or your command prompt on your local computer. Um, the console is where we can input and output information to our computer program. So this is sort of like a little screen where we can input and we can enter and see information. This is how we execute our program, or we can click the run button to execute or to run our Python program. Um, if that doesn't make sense to you right now, that's fine. Um, I'll get more into what that means later on. What we're gonna learn about today is the concept of variables. So variables are similar to um, variables you've heard of in eighth grade algebra class. Basically, this is an example of a variable. Um, this now means that the letter A stands for three, okay? So if we go ahead and we do this, um, print A, and what this is doing is this is pr printing the value of a to our console so we can see what it is. If we do that, then we can see that a does indeed equal three, okay? Basically what happens is this equal sign is called an assignment operator and it assigns number three to a. So now whenever we use a, um, we get the number three. Now, like in algebra, we can manipulate this variable and we can do a variety of things with it. So for example, what we can do is create another variable called b and set it equal to a plus two. That means we'll get the value of a, we'll add two to it, and the result will be stored in three right here. Um, if we do that, we can get rid of, well, we need to keep a, we can get rid of print a right here and just print b. If we run this, that means that we will get five. Again, another way to run this program would be to use this right here. So what we can do is we can say Python, and right here, this file is called main.py. So we can run my, we can run Python main.py and then hit enter. And we'll get our output of five right here. That just, go, that just goes to show you that we are working in a Python file and we are um, running, we're using the Python command to execute or run our Python program right here. Um, we don't need this for now. Let's see if we can actually just close this out right here. Anyways, we're still in main.py. Um, now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set a equal to five, and then we're going to print b again. What do you think is gonna happen? Do you think the answer will be the same as before, or do you think it'll be seven? Let's go ahead and let's run it. Actually, we can go ahead and get rid of this. Cool, so we've just got five. We have the same as what we had up here. So even though we changed the value of A down here, um, we're still printing out our value of B from up here. Basically the way this works, or the way Python works is, it executes each line of code one by one. So first we sent the computer this line of code, then this line of code, then this line of code, and then this line of code. So B was stored here and nothing more was done to B. So even though A is changed here, when we print out the value of B, we get what we calculated up here. Now, if we change b equals four right here, then we're gonna get four. That's a basic example of how variables work. Um, now, one other example, let's say we want, let's say we set a equal to b and we print out a. What do you think we're gonna get? We're gonna get four. B is equal to four right here. We assign the, whatever the value was, was a B to A. 
we're printing out A right here to our console, or we can again do this and get the same value. And that's pretty much it. Um, this is a pretty basic but very powerful concept. Uh, basically, the way this works is um, th these letters are actually just symbols. They're stand-ins for locations in the computer's memory. And really, when we use this equal sign, we're telling um, the computer to store these values somewhere in the computer's RAM or memory at a location that we personally don't know, um, but is represented by this letter. There are ways to actually see that location if you want to, but we're not going to do that because, frankly speaking, it's, not, it's almost never necessary. Now, just to kind of hammer home these concepts, let's go ahead and do some exercises. So what I want to do now is, I guess I'll just zoom out there. Um, we'll start with exercise one. What I want to do is I want to do a couple of things. Create two variables named C and D. And then set C to 3 and D to negative 3. Uh, next, I want to multiply these together and set the result equal to 3. So we're going to set, we're going to create a variable named C, set it equal to 3, and then D, and then set it equal to negative 3. So let's go ahead and do this, C equals 3, D equals negative 3. Um, we want to multiply them by the we want to multiply them by each other and set the result equal to E. So E equals C times D. Um, this the result of this is going to get stored in the variable E and then print out E. So if we did every, if we did everything correctly, we should get negative 9. Let's go ahead and let's just run that right here. Cool. And we get negative 9. Um, now, right here, and in all the in the, all the examples before this, I've used numbers. Um, variables don't simply have to be numbers. We'll get into the other types of data we can store in variables in our next tutorial. But before that, let's do another exercise. So exercise two is going to be a bit more complicated. So what we want to do is we want to swap the values of any two variables. So first, we're going to create two variables called x and y. Next, we're going to uh, set x equal to 5 and y equal to 6. What we want to do now is we want to swap the values of y and x. So we basically want uh, x to be equal to 6 and y to be equal to 5. However, uh, we need to do this. We need to do this without explicitly setting their values. Setting their values. So what that means is that basically, oh, my typing's terrible. Um, we are not going to do this. Okay. This would be wrong. Um, what we need to do is we need to swap them using instead. Um, so this is actually a hint, swap them using a third variable for temporary storage. And then once you're done, you need to print out X and Y to show you did, that, you did, that you did your job correctly. So let's go ahead and do it. So we've got X equal to 5 and we've got y equal to 6, all right? Um, so what we want to do is we want to create a temporary variable called temp, and we'll set temp equal to x. So that means that temp is now going to take on 5 in this case. It's going to take on whatever the value of x is, OK? Um, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and give y our value of x, OK? So that means that now we're going to set y is going to become 5. Actually, let's do something different. We've actually stored x right here in temp. So technically, we, we don't need to worry about the value of x anymore. So rather, let's set x equal to y. So we're going to say then we're going to give x 
the value of 6. So y's value, which was 6, is getting transferred to x. And that's after we transferred, we basically stored um, x's value in a, val in a variable called temp. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get set, we're going to set y equal to temp. So now temp is 5. So that means that we're going, that y is going to become 5. Okay. So by the way, these things right here with the pound signs, those are just, those are just comments. So these don't actually do anything at all. They're just comments. So you can kind of see what I've been, what I've done. So I can explain what I've been doing in this program. So now that you've done that, let's go ahead and print X and let's go ahead and print Y. So we should get um, six for X and five for Y. Let's go ahead and let's just run it and try it. And it looks like we were successful. Also this code, if we switch this, so if you change this to um, John, well, actually let's do numbers just to keep it simple. But if we change this to, to three and this one to four, then we get four and three. If we ch change this to John and this to Alice, then we get Alice and John, okay? So we've got one more exercise kind of leapfrogging off this one. Um, so what we want to do is we're going to do exercise three. And again, this is going to be leading into our third, our second tutorial. So what I want you to do is create a variable called first name. Um, and right here, notice we have an underscore. So underscores are generally used when we want to connect two words. Um, for a variable name because we just can't have white space. We can't have separate words that stand for a variable. They all need to be connected by something. And if we have two words, we can connect them with an underscore right here. So create a variable called, called first name and give it a value of John. Um, now, you know, what I want to do is print out that variable. Now, and this is just to show you again that not all variables will store numbers. So we'll set first name equals John, and then we'll print, we'll just print out this variable. So print first name. Let's go ahead and run that. And we've got John. So now that we've done this, what I want to do is I want to share a little bit of theory with you on how variables actually work under the hood. So basically what happens when we have something like a equals six, um, the, when we create this a right here, the computer automatically selects a location in our memory. So our memory is our RAM. Um, it's in our computer. So we're just going to create this box called RAM for our memory. Okay. So in our RAM, we have basically something that looks like a table. And in this table, we have two columns. One is for addresses. I know I spelled address wrong. And the other is for data. Now, when we create this variable A right here, the computer automatically allocates an address in memory. So the addresses usually look something like this, zero, or x07895. Um, it's in a format called hexadecimal. That format isn't really important, but I just want to keep it authentic. So the computer will automatically um, allocate an address right here, and it will link that to A, to what we've created right here. And in that location, in this address location, um, it will store the data, six. So anytime we go back and try to access A, really what we're doing is accessing X07895 and getting this piece of data, six, from there. The assignment operator basically accomplishes this. Um, one other thing to keep in mind is that RAM is only available, well, so data is, is actually um, erased from RAM whenever electricity leaves it. So when you turn the computer off, all the data in RAM is going to be gone. Also, in the case of our computer programs, whenever you close the program, all the data um, corresponding to our program, corresponding to the variables of the program is gone. That's why usually if we want to store data that we can access um, in between closing and opening programs, it needs to be done in a hard disk or in a database about which we will learn later. Anyways, 
That's some theory on how variables work. If you found value in this tutorial and you want to see more of these, please remember to like and subscribe to this channel. Uh, stay tuned for the next tutorial on data types. Have a nice day.